Okay, good evening, kiddies. Dr. Freedom here with you. Time for some Dr. News. News from in and around the universe that may or may not affect you on some weird level that can make you go, ooh, I like that so much. I could have some more. Okay, you know, stuff like that. Okay, um, it seems like every year around this time of the year, you know, when Dr. is on hiatus, that's when everybody does the, is Capaldi leaving? So he's definitely gone. I remember back when they were saying he was a one-year doctor. I'm like, it was just crazy. So all right, that's kind of a little bit of a central focus on some of our articles. Plus, some stuff we got class coming up tonight. So please stay tuned. Let's get weird. Okay, let's all right, let's hit it. Bam. Wrong theme song. Okay. Peter Capaldi has not made up his mind about leaving Doctor Who after Series 10. And this was a nice little thing on Where It Wales Online where uh, he has been asked to stay on, but he has not made his mind up yet. He said the greatest influence is how good of a time he's been having. He said, oh, yeah, I love this. I'm, I'm lucky enough to be in touch with other doctors, and we all agree how extraordinary it is to be in this position. If I, to decide to leave is a tough decision for everybody. It was very tough for Steven, so I'm putting it off for as long as possible. All right, let's see. Now, now the best one I saw here, let's zoom down to the bottom. If he does decide to stay on, stay on for Series 11, which would start in 2018, it would mean he would celebrate a landmark birthday as the doctor. He goes, that would be a good way to spend your 60th birthday, don't you think? And this is a very, very touching article. He goes into a bunch of different things like that. Y'all, I'm going to leave this one now, y'all, for you to read. Remember, you know, all you folks who are just jumping in, you know, because you guys at home already know this, who've been, you know, tagging along on the Freedom Train. The links are always below in the description box if you want to go look at these articles for yourself. All right. Peter Capaldi would like to travel back in time for the a David Bowie concert and the moon landing. So that's right. He's revealed he would use his time traveling powers of the TARDIS to attend a David Bowie Ziggy Stardust concert. He also said he liked to visit New York in the 1920s and a cafe on Berwick Street in London where he left a pair of sunglasses three years ago. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so some nice stuff here. Please, please go look at this one. It's not that big of an article, but at least you got to get a couple of cute photos with it. Oh, I'll say moving on. Sorry. Like that. And, you know, my beef head, my friend, yeah, beef had put this up earlier. Oh, sorry. Oh, I had a long day at work. And it's kind of nice to know you know, this was in his own hometown paper. Moving on, Steve Moffat reveals almost all about the Doctor Christmas special. <laughs> and uh, he addresses different questions one by one, you know. And, uh, and of course, he did, you know, pick on the fact that, yes, this is a Lois Lane Clark Kent kind of thing playing out here. And, you know, that's kind of something we all picked up on there, especially fans of the 78 Superman movie. Um, now, the thing is also, this is playing right into one of our leaked things that was coming out about it being a, uh, um, somebody, you know, a kid who it does wind up with superpowers in the story. So that's playing with one of the leaked spoilers. Uh, most of it's set in modern day New York, but they did not shoot it there. They shot it in Bulgaria. Ask, yeah, ask uh, Bruce Campbell about Bulgaria. <laughs> okay. There are monsters, and there's a proper villainous plot. Uh, I hope so. And how does Matt Lucas fit into the story? Uh, he goes a little bit into that, but not too much. Um, like I said, it's up to you if you want to take a look at this. He doesn't really get really spoilery at all. This Moffat, he always plays his cards close to the vest. So, Boom. You know, link below in the description box will take you there. Return to Dr. Mysterio is going to be shown in, no, by Cinemax in Denmark. That's right. Danish cinema goers can also enjoy the return of Dr. Mysterio on the big screen. As Cinemax announced, the Christmas special will be shown in their Odense, Aarhus, and Copenhagen cinemas on Boxing Day at 1.30 p.m. with additional showing on the 28th of December at 6.30 p.m. Sorry, I just I don't know how to read Dutch. So or whatever they're speaking in Denmark these days. So if you're into that and you're in Denmark, bam, check this out. Maybe go check this out. Maybe you can hit it. All right, moving on. Out today, the new 11th Doctor comic. Once again, if you haven't picked it up yet, you want to take a little pre-screening of it. Bing, bang, bang. Here's three of the covers, and here's what you call the first couple of pages if you want to check it out. All right. Now, 
Here's another thing. Now let's wander around the class for a minute. Now class will get a late night slot when it airs on BBC One next year. Now, I'm sorry, I got my sinuses are really bugging me today. Um, BBC Three is Doctor Who spinoff class is destined for a late showing on BBC One when it makes its terrestrial TV TV debut sometime next year. So they are going to air it on BBC One, probably a late night slot. But the problem is, is that going to be enough to save it? Um, the funniest part is, hang on, uh, the main reason I put this next article up is get ready for this. I hope you're all sitting down. The yay, a young adult spinoff that finally brings Doctor Who into the 21st century. I want to smack somebody in the face so hard that their teeth fly out and smack against the wall and make that nice, kind little tinkly noise like glass hitting the floor. I'm not kidding. Doctor Who brought Doctor Who into the 21st century back in 2005, numb nuts. I'm not kidding. Dan Martin, hang your shit up because you obviously don't know what planet you're on. This show was beyond awful. It was, it was Buffy the Vampire Slayer gone wrong. I'm not kidding. It was just come. Yeah, as somebody brought up, you got the Shadowkin Klingons. Oh. This was probably the only character I really got attached to and was stayed on for the whole thing for was Miss Quill, played by Catherine Kelly. And but the best part of it is the only reason I included this article, go down and read the comments. I am not, I thought it was gonna be another one of them classic cases of you know, we the guys on the Omega Files were gonna be you know, hanging out there with our dicks in the winds, the only ones saying, you know, look, this sucks, it's bad. And but no, no, no. Read the comments on this article because a lot of reality hits. It's not just us. A lot of people know this is shit. There's a few people out there blowing sunshine up their class, but the problem is, is that going to be enough? Okay, and lastly for today, on a sad topic, Russell T. Davies regrets ending the Sarah Jane Adventures. Brian Minchin revealed that he does regret, he does now regret ending the series. Um, the thing was, I think they both kind of agreed, if you read the article here, that they kind of did it because they were both in shock. There were a billion and five ways you're going to continue the Sarah Jane adventures on me. I would have loved to have seen the Ace Adventures pick up from where it left off. Sophie Aldred's willing to do it. And, um, or, you know, another idea we threw out there when this happened was you could have had Nicola Bryant resume her role as Perry, only now she's come back to Earth. And remember, uh, Perry left Earth back in the 1980s. So it would be an interesting series watching the kids try to get her back up to date on her own home planet. It was an idea we just threw out there. You know, if you like it or not, uh, it's, you never know. So, yeah, sadly, they do regret it now. It could have went on. It really could have. Uh, at first, you know, I could see why they didn't because, you know, maybe they're doing it out of respect for Elizabeth Sladen. But I think she would have wanted the show to go on because it had such a profound impact on young adults especially bringing them into the Doctor Who universe in a friendly way, in a way that actually ties it to the Doctor Who universe, unlike another show that we just talked about. Okay, so until next time, everybody, take care. Ta-ta. Have a good one. I'll see you on the flip side. And I can't stress this enough. Class is shit. I'm not kidding. I, but I, If you like it, that's up to you. But I, I can't. I tried. I really tried. <laughs> I tried, damn it. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>